Guns and Tactics 2022 TriggerCon coverage. We got to spend some range time with these Cobalt rifles, and I have to say I was impressed. They got a lot of cool stuff going on. Not only do they look cool, but they run cool, and there's some really cool stuff going on under the hood that Aaron, literally the man in charge, is going to tell us all about. Right on. You know, historically, Cobalt been around since 2014. Um, Focus primarily on the, the three-gun side, the competition world. Uh, purchased the company in 2020, and over the past two years, uh, tried to take some of those characteristics, refine them, make them a lot more reliable, put them into a platform that would be considered more of a duty grade, um, focus on reliability, things like that. Um, most of the parts, actually all of the parts except our upper and handguard itself are reverse compatible. So they're, they're traditional parts. You can swap things in and out, um, but it is a little bit different right here. And that's kind of the, the heart of the gun in, in, in the, uh, the upper itself. Yeah, and everything, I mean, like I said, guys, it doesn't just look good, like, you know, lines and the aesthetics and things like that, but the structure and the rigidity that we were kind of nerding out about prior to this is what I really want to have highlighted for you guys. Like, this just kind of excites the gun nerd in me. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm kind of a self proclaimed <laughs> nerd myself, so I, so I like to tinker, I like to, I like to look at things, but it's got to be about, you know, form and function. The, the aesthetics, all of that is is important but it's not the most important it's it's why we do the things that we do um you know we take a lot of care in in how this attaches as well as like the lines that are coming through so the picatinny is is super consistent you can cross mount things you you don't have wide fat pieces on the end that it, it's continual all the way down yeah so let's talk a little bit about the handguard to upper fit and interface because that is unique and proprietary and quite frankly pretty cool yeah, it, it, and it's it's not something that hasn't been done before in a, in a in, in in different ways. But um, when we went about this, it was really important to me that we separated or deslave the the upper to I'm sorry the handguard to the barrel, and so extending out the upper receiver, inverting those threads. Like I said, it it has been done before, but not to the degree that that we're getting the the results that we're getting, and so. You know, looking down, you've got a flat surface, uh, a shelf, if you will, that does not have any thread engagement to it. It's precision milled to a super tight tolerance, um, so we don't have to lap it, anything like that. The barrel sits flush. Uh, the the jam nut that goes down is uh, 7075 aluminum, same material. You don't have competing materials as, you know, you, you've got a lot of action going on around this area. Um, you're going to get expansion and contracting at, at more or less the same rate. Hmm. And I mean, look at this jam nut. This isn't a traditional barrel nut. It's a jam nut. So a standard AR barrel barrel extension will go in here, but then this jam nut, I mean, look at how much thread engagement and surface and how much extra material we're adding. I mean, that it's, it's pretty cool what's going on. Yeah, it, it, this was a trickier part because, you know, adding this much of, of the the extension on the upper can can add a lot of weight but we were very careful in how we how we focused on the dimensions yeah it does change the balance of the rifle you're going to get something that's more um balanced a little bit further up which ends up being a, a benefit when you're running a gun fast and hard that you're able to move it because of where that balance sits yeah uh, and then just how everything locked up, the guns felt super solid, the gas regulation was really good. You guys are manufacturing your own gas blocks, so you're regulating gas really well, like even shooting them suppressed. I found it to be a very pleasant experience. Uh, you know, some guns, especially shorter guns, can be overgassed. You add a suppressor, you get more of the feeling, and I didn't have any of those issues. So it seems like you guys are doing a lot to make a complete system that has a really good shooting experience. Like, and limited range time, guys, I get that, but I was impressed first impression was pretty solid. Yeah, it's important for me that, you know, as as you make one change to the rifle, you have to look at the entire system as a whole. So you're looking at, you know, barrel length versus gas port size versus um, the length of the, of the gas system that you have, and then taking that back all the way through to the buffer system, what weights, what springs are you running? Uh, we run a, a, a modified A5, so we uh, collaborated with uh, Voltor and this is the A5CK and it features a um, anti-tilt and uh, preload little feature on the front there so it's got an angle there sits inside the bolt carrier group at an angle it doesn't fully seat on the shelf there um, so it sits off you get a retaining pin offset on that mm. but then as it's going back down like when we t when we talk about anti-tilt we're not talking you know piston carrier yeah. tilt we're talking 
anti-cavitation, anti-wobble as it's going down the, the buffer tube itself. It stays uh, super in line. It, it doesn't have that wobble and it's extremely efficient. Yeah. Well, for more information, I want you guys to learn more. Head on over to our webpage, Guns and Tactics. We're going to have links, more information on all the cool stuff that Cobalt is doing. Thanks for watching TriggerCon 2022.